His one-time secretary, uh, R.A. Downey, who was, was provoked to defend him against presumptuous younger critics, among whom he singled out the professor of social anthropology in Oxford, E. Evans Pritchard. But anthropologists are a queer tribe, Downey wrote, and since 1948, when Evans Pritchard gave his lecture on the divine kingship of the Shiluk, it has become almost traditional in Fraser lectures uh, to take some idea of Fraser's and pull it to pieces. <laughs> Downey exaggerates, but it's true that some later lecturers have followed a brief conventional acknowledgement of Fraser's undoubted eminence by papers which implicitly raised doubts about whether or why he deserved it. And even now, a century after Golden Bough was first published, and half a century after Fraser's death, Fraser of the Golden Bough still remains, if only by name, by far the most widely known of all British social anthropologists. Whether they like it or not, Fraser's popular reputation remains part of their own. And since he raised the question of posterity, it seems appropriate to take the occasion of these anniversaries to look back on some of the verdicts that have been passed on his work, for the most part by those outside the small circle of distinguished fellows, who were, uh, scholars who were his friends. The first full-scale biography of Fraser didn't appear until 1987. Robert Ackerman's J.G. Fraser, His Life and Work, draws upon most published and many hitherto unpublished sources to bring together, uh, to bring to life, Fraser's character and intellectual interests, and he had very few others, in relation both to his own times and to ours. If I add little more to that book than a few asides from my own anthropological viewpoint, I have two excuses. The first is that my DPhil thesis in Oxford was examined and approved by the Reverend E.O. James, who was born in 1888, and who is described by Ackerman as the last of the true believing Fraserians. And he was kind enough to suppose that at heart I shared his faith. The second is that before Ackerman thought of writing his book, I also had taken an interest in some of Fraser's unpublished letters, or rather unpublished letters to Fraser, when they first began to arrive here in Trinity College, jumbled together in a few old cardboard boxes. And I have made use of a few which Ackerman uh, disregarded. <laughs>